and welcome to Breaking It All Down. I'm Count Zero. It's been a while since I last did a video game review, and I mean really ripped into one, like a chainsaw into a side of beef. So, this time, I'm going to be taking a look at a video game that is more recent, yet still widely regarded as a classic. Gears of War. The game begins 14 years after Emergence Day, which I presume is humanity's first contact with the Locusts, the game's bad guys. This is awesome! 14 years. That's enough time for our main characters to have gone from adolescence, or their late teen years, into adulthood. So we'll get some real serious character exploration about what growing up in a world that's known only war is like. Wait. What? Am I bringing it up at all? This is going to be a rough one, isn't it? Well, let's get this over with. We meet our heroes, Marcus Phoenix and Dominic Santiago. Marcus is currently in prison for reasons that are unexplained in the game. This is also where, in the game, we get the option for the tutorial, so I might as well get my thoughts on the controls and gameplay out of the way now. Now, I'm, I, w I would say this game is your standard for third-person shooter, except this game set the standard for third-person shooters. Controls are solid, aiming is solid, Though the zoom option can be a little imprecise, or your, your aimed option can be a little imprecise. Getting into and out of cover is smooth and organic, and the roadie run method of going from cover to cover also works very well. You can have a good amount of peripheral vision so you can see where you're going. The guns have some problems. Some of the weapons, like the sniper rifle, torque bow, and shotgun, work pretty nicely, and the game has some of the best grenades I've ever seen in a video game particularly with the way that when you aim it, it gives you an arc and tells you where you're putting the grenade. That's something which, frankly, more games need to implement. The problem is your standard assault rifle, the Lancer. I found that I've that you could basically pump nearly an entire magazine into your bog standard drone before you killed it. Thus, not surprisingly, your assault rifle carries an absurd amount of ammunition, with the max amount just stopping just under 900 rounds. It just feels absurd. The game's other big major thing, aside from its nice cover system, the chainsaw bayonet, is a mixed bag. On the one hand, when you kill somebody with it, you get a nice, satisfying animation, it looks really it looks really visually cool, has a visceral sense to it. The problem is, it takes a few seconds to rev up the chainsaw before you can actually kill somebody with it, at which point you could have gotten killed yourself. Further, once you've actually killed somebody with, this, with the thing, you get this big blood splatter on the screen, particularly on the camera, which partially obscures the screen, and re it remains there for several seconds. Does it look cool? Yeah. Could you get possibly get killed because you are waiting for the blood splatter to fade so you can see what the hell you're doing? Also, yes. So, Dom frees Marcus, and they start making their way out of the prison. Man, if Command knew I was here to get you, I'd be in some deep shit. Hang on. If everyone in the prison was pardoned, then why the hell would anyone care about you freeing Marcus? So, this level also gives you your first introduction to your enemies, the Locusts. They're big, they're dumb, and their guns are pretty much identical to yours in that AK-47 to M16 kind of way. So, we have bald space marines in, using chainsaw versions of bladed weapons, in massive suits of power or otherwise augmented armor, with pistols whose bullets look like bolts, in a universe where the characters have grown up only knowing war. My god! This is Warhammer 40k! After getting out of the prison, you're introduced to Delta Squad, consisting of, in addition to our heroes, Lieutenant Kim and Private Carmine, or as I will call them, Lieutenant Dead and Private Debtor. We will also meet Colonel Hoffman, who gives us the plot of the game. We now have the light mass bomb! I'll take Shoot out it. all these bastards with one shot! Up high. But it can't work if we don't have the targeting data! 
That's why we need the Resonator! Watch the side! You missed! It'll map their tunnel! So that we can hit those sons of bitches where Get they on. live! And Anya, who was our operator for the course of the game. And thus we are sent on our merry way. Now that we're out of the prison, I want to talk a moment about the game's destroyed beauty visual style since we're finally getting a good look at it now. All the buildings in the game, both inside and out, look nice. And let's just talk about the game's graphics either. The buildings themselves are visually appealing. This really looks like a world that, if it wasn't in the midst of being torn apart by a genocidal war, could be one that wouldn't be too bad to live in. This level also introduces us to emergence holes. Basically, these are holes that open up in the ground which locusts either come out of until they close on their own, or until you throw a grenade in. Thus, with some carefully aimed grenades, you can theoretically close these holes after only a couple of locusts come out, which makes for a nice little mechanic. This level also really demonstrates just how dumb the AI for your squad mates can get. Far too often, your teammates will just rush ahead and get themselves killed, leaving you to have to chase after them and save their hides. I hope that's not Rojas down there. This little boy just turned two last week. Apparently, war movies don't exist in this universe. Anyway, in the course of searching for Alpha Squad, Private Debtor gets capped by a Locust Sniper. Well, that was quick! Finally, you meet up with the other two members of Alpha Squad. Tech Specialist Damon Baird and Augustus Coltrane Cole. A... <sighs> smack and borderline jive-talking former crash ball player. Really? You don't have war movies, so you don't know when you've jinxed things as far as somebody surviving, but you do know enough about early 20th century jazz musicians to, f to screw up a reference to one of them! Well, we have five guys now, which is just one too many, which means it's now time for Lieutenant Dead to die. Fortunately, rather than going out like a punk, like Private Debtor, he gets to go out at the hands of General Ram, the big bad of the game. However, as for the rest of us, we have a boss fight. Specifically, a fight against the Berserker. They have a cave troll. Anyway, you lure the thing outside and smoke it with your kill sack, the Hammer of Dawn. Is it just me? Or is this way too classy a name for a piece of military hardware? Or any of... There's any piece of military hardware. Not just, like, weapons, but, like, vehicles. The SOL from Akira had a more plausible-sounding name, and it had an acronym to explain that, that explained that specific combination of letters. Unfortunately, you are now somewhat SOL yourself, as you have no transport to your objective. Fortunately, Dom knows a guy who has a vehicle. Unfortunately, you have to hoof it to a stranded outpost to meet this guy. Upon reaching the stranded outpost, you get a nice warm welcome from the locals. Hey, hey pig! I'm talking to you, piggy! Blow me! Maybe it's just me, but I never quite grokked the stranded. Were they left behind by an evacuation? Did they choose to stay behind, like people who stayed in New Orleans rather than evacuating to get out of the way of Hurricane Katrina? Was the COG government too disorganized to get these people out? It's never really explained, and it always bugs me a little bit. They're, they hate the COG government, and the COG government seems to strongly dislike them, but there's no basis for this animosity. We learn that Dom's contacts with the Stranded are because he needs their help to find his wife. He persuades his contact to loan him his ride, and Marcus and Dom go out to get it, while Cole and Baird stare behind at the settlement. Considering that this setting is shooting for Warhammer 40k Grimdark, I think it's safe to say Dom's wife is probably already dead, or worse. On your way to the vehicle, the sun goes down, and millions upon millions of flesh-eating deep crow, or krill, come out. Basically, these suckers will kill you stone dead unless you stay in the light. So, you make your way through the city at night, staying in the light, while Baird bitches at you over the comm. We are going to get dysentery from this shit. You reach the station, and end up having to defend it while you fill the gas tank of your vehicle. 
After defending it, you get a really, really annoying driving sequence. Basically, as you drive along your little route, you'll be attacked by Krill. To fend them off, you have to stop the vehicle and switch to a UV light turret, and you can't use the turret while you're driving. Consequently, this sequence has some of the worst pacing in the entire game. Finally, you get back to the stranded outpost, only to discover that the facility is under heavy attack. So, you defend the outpost, and then head to your next objective, the pumping facility. Your car breaks down outside the facility, and you have to head in on foot. At which point we basically stop getting storyline developments for a bit. We meet some new monsters, the Lambent Ranches, crawly guys who blow up when you kill them, and we set up that they've been exposed to lots of emulsion, which is basically glowing gold blood of the earth. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Before we get down to seeing the emulsion, we have an on-rails minecart level. Whoopee! Thank god we're not getting an elevator level, and Cole and Baird have to deal with the sewer level off camera. Finally, we then descend into the depths of the earth. I only wish it was that fun. Finally, we get a boss fight with a corpser, which is basically a giant spider that you kill somewhat anticlimactically. We reach the pumping station, and I want to mention here that the checkpointing for this specific point in the game is complete and utter rubbish. We also get our torque bow here, which I mentioned earlier, briefly, and we get the, car the new enemies of the Theron Guards, who exclusively carry torque bows and are quite capable of insta-gibbing you with them. Unfortunately, the resonator, which you took all this trouble to get here, doesn't do the job. It generally gets a partial picture of the Locust Tunnel Network. Fortunately, Baird discovers, and by which I mean he pulls out of his derriere, a device that reveals a network of probes that will show the full tunnel network of the Locusts. And the place that has all the central data is Marcus's old home, because it was his dad's project. So Delta Squad is sent to retrieve the data. However, General Ram learns about this too from a headset communicator from J Random Gear who happened to have picked up the whole thing. So go through all this, get the pumping station and resonator. Clean up the resonator. Now, I've got a bunch of problems with all this. First, why didn't anyone know Mar that Marcus's dad was working on this project? It's a big, ambitious project, doing all these little sensor things to get, a na to get an accurate map of the locust tunnels. Um, even assuming that Marcus and his dad weren't on speaking terms at all, the project this big, big just can't be done alone. You've got to do it with other people. You have to have collaborators. You have to have other people getting these out there and collecting information or getting this set up for you. This isn't like some Marvel Comics project where you have one scientist working in his secret base full of robot bodyguards trying to fight off, trying to discover the cure for mutancy or whatever. You can't do this alone. There would be other people who would know. Which means that the COG government would have had some way of knowing this. It's just kind of mind-boggling. Somebody should have been able to say when the res when they were talking about the resonator, well, sir, there's a complete map of the locust tunnels at the uh, Phoenix Estate. If we could just go there and pick that up, then we wouldn't have to send a team of Marines on a, what's potentially a suicide mission to retrieve the nest to do a map of the tunnels for the bomb. Sir. And just even for that, Aside from that, why is General Ram able to overhear this little communication at all? That guy wasn't in Delta Squad. Is there, like, no comm segregation or encryption in the dark future where there is only war? Is that lost technology, like whatever brought humanity to this godforsaken rock in the first place? The player makes his way through town, with the squad meeting another enemy, the Cedar, which is basically locust anti-air artillery, who you kill with the kill set. We then get another boss fight against the Berserker. So you ran out of ideas with the Cedar, I see. Finally, you reach the stairs up to Marcus's dad's house. 
Wow, the Phoenix family must have really been loaded to have owned a place like this, yet none of Marcus's squad mates comment on this. You clear the house, going room by room until you reach Marcus's dad's lab in the basement. Once you find the lab, you get not one, but two consecutive survival sequences. We've gotten some of these before on earlier levels, but never back to back. And they generally work like the first one here, where your robot, Jack, rips open a door for you, as what happens here. Then, after a cutscene in the lab, you get another one as you defend the building while Jack downloads the necessary information to his computers. Finally, after Jack's downloaded the data, you make, the break, make a break for it in an APC that Baird found abandoned nearby. So, is that like a perk or feat that Baird took? Find abandoned yet useful gadgets to, that forward the plot? You drive to the train station where you're supposed to board the train carrying the light mass bomb. Mankind's super weapon against the locusts, but lo and behold, the locusts have gotten here first and are now fully entrenched, forcing you to fight your way through them. You know, if the locusts were so sophisticated that they could intercept the cogs' communications and get here first, why didn't they? Oh, I don't know. Open a few emergence holes right on the train tracks, and the tracks aren't going anywhere, and cause the train to derail. Boom! You've stopped the train, or possibly even completely destroyed it, you've stopped the bomb from being launched with the data, and thus prevented this whole mission from successfully taking you out. It feels like willful stupidity on the part of the... Uh, of the locusts. It sounds like something that the orcs would do, almost, except the locusts don't have the sort of endearing stupidity. That, that's gotta be it. The locusts are the orcs from Warhammer 40k, except to avoid being sued by games workshops, they Epic took every sort of little endearing trait from the orcs, like their comedic stupidity and the more daka and the red ones go faster, and all that other great stuff, and just re and just made them generic, ugly, growly mon monsters that are kind of humanoid. And similarly, with the Marines, they just took the religious zealotry of the humans and the particularly the Imperium from Warhammer 40k, and just replaced it with kind of generic scenery chewing bad attitude. And oh yeah, I could do this all day after cutting through yet another drone with the chainsaw bayonet. And this basically has left us with a setting so generic that its only real distinguishing trait is its architecture. In that instead of being gothic like Warhammer 40k, or having the art deco look of the of prequel Star Wars and Coruscant and parts of parts of Naboo or that sort of thing. Instead, this just kind of looks like oh Victorian England, not even Victorian England, but like Edwardian England or that sort of thing, except with guys in battle suits in it. Oh, and to make this level better, we get yet another Berserker fight. No, I'm not going to show it. I'm not going to reward them by letting you see this, by, by subjecting you to this. So after boarding the train and fighting your way up the train, you finally reach its head, where you fight General Ram at last. On my, play, on my playthrough, I found this boss fight to be a real pain in the butt in part because I just couldn't quite get the zoom control for the sniper rifle master. Then the only way to beat him is to shoot him with the torque bow, which breaks up this little shield of krill around him, and then pop him in the head with the sniper rifle, and you do this until he dies. And it has to be headshots here. Nothing else will really do it. So, you finally get the data to the missiles and blow the locust cave complex up. The end! Except, of course, not, because we've got two more games to go in the series. So, now it's time for the verdict. The game controls really well. I will admit that there are some chunks of this game where I had real fun. However, there are other parts of this game where it just drags. And drags horribly. The story, as I've pointed out, is an absolute mess. The trip to the refinery with the resonator was okay and had some good mood to it. And there also was some really good world building with the Lambent Wretches and with the going into the various caves. 
But having the resonator fail was just frustrating. It just basically made me feel made me as a player feel like I wasted a substantial amount of time. I understand putting the detour all in there to the Phoenix estate to set up Marcus's father, but if you have that, you don't need the resonator. Well, however, because we, however, because planting the resonator was important world building, it basically it, it makes things a little tricky here. I mean, establishing the emulsion and effects and life forms is, from what I gather of the next game's plot, important to that plot, the plot of that game. It's important to set all that up. So it, it's complicated. It's tricky to get this to get both sections here, but it can be fixed. There is a fix for this. And one which goes through most of the environments of the game too without making it so you have to generate new assets. So hey, Epic, if you're watching, here's your late fix. And you can keep this in mind for if you do God of uh, Gears of War 4. Here's what you do. The light mass bomb is the longer collection of missiles. Instead, it is a explosive charge that has to be placed underground. COG still needs to know where to plant it for maximum effect, which means they need targeting data from the Locust Tunnel maps that Marcus's father created. Due to Locust air superiority, while en route to the Phoenix estate, their chopper is downed or otherwise forced to land prematurely, and they are now required to get extra air support from the stranded. Alternatively, um, start things off. You can even start things off the same way, where Delta Squad is sent to rescue Alpha Squad, which have the which has the light mass bomb, instead of them having the resonator. And so let's start things off there. So now they are in the middle of the city with the with the bomb, and now they need to get to the Phoenix Estate, which require and since they don't have air superiority, they have to get help from the stranded which means we still get to go through that level, so that area is kept in the game as well. The team makes it to the East Barricade Academy, that level sequence remains the same, and they get the information. And from there, they get a helicopter to get them out, and they proceed from there to the refinery, and then into the caves, and with the final boss fight against General Ram, instead of being it on the back of a moving train with General Ram being there for convoluted reasons. Instead, you're fighting General Ram not because he's anticipated everything you're doing because your operational security is stupid. Instead, you're fighting him because you're on his turf. He can tell where you're coming. He can see from your path kind of where you're going and prepare a defense there. After you've Planted the charge, you escape the surface, get out by helicopter before the bomb goes up the end. The, you are not generating any new assets with this rewrite, and in fact, instead of generating new assets, you're, we're only cutting out like one chunk. We're cutting the train and the train station. That's it. And frankly, cutting the train, save, train level is fine. To be absolutely honest, train levels left the station long ago back with bad dudes. So, if you want to play this game now, I'm not too fond of the single player experience, just a single player. Fortunately, the game does feature a two player co op which will take you through the same campaign as the single player mode, but now you have a buddy instead of the horrifically stupid AI from single player. So, if you're going to play Gears of War, Play it that way. Play it co-op, either online or on the couch with a friend. Don't do it alone. That and that should possibly lead lead to easing some of the pacing problems as well. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.